What's going on you guys, Steven here. Today we are going to be doing the full review and shooting test of this beautiful G&G L85A2 with the ETU. If you guys are interested in uh, reading up on this, possibly purchasing this, um, or even watching the unboxing video of this, the links for all that will be in the description, okay? So I think you can get this for $400 um, on airsoftmaster.com. I think that's the website's name. We're getting though. Regardless, links in the description and the link to the unboxing video is in the description as well. But yeah, so just like all my other reviews, we're gonna be inside for the first half just talking about it breaking this down you know externally then we're going to talk about the internal just a little bit even though there's not too much information on this guy there's just I can't find anything really on it um, but yeah I'll do my best to cover this for you guys and then we'll head outside and that's where the fun will begin and uh, you know we're going to be doing the chrono test the action test and the damage test but obviously I'll have clips of me firing this thing and I had to program this thing for three round bursts because yes it can do that but yeah you guys already know I'll break this thing down let's get started all right so I guess we can start from the front and then work our way to the back like how we always do so starting at the front we do have a full metal orange flash hider which you can remove uh, you can go ahead and put whatever uh, you know flash hider you want on there and then you have your full metal outer barrel right behind that anyways though, so moving on um, from the uh, outer barrel we do have our handguard here which is finished in OD green it is very very nice and we I just I love the uh, OD green accents on this thing uh, but the uh, battery compartment space is in the handguard just go ahead and lift up on that trap door as you can see there's pretty good amount of uh, battery uh, battery space in there so you don't have to be too picky on what you use however if you're having a hard time fitting the uh, battery through the top here through this trap door on the right hand side of the handguard is a screw just go ahead and unscrew that the sling attachment point on the opposite side will fall on out because that screw is holding that in place uh, take the screw out as well and then you can actually go ahead and just remove you know an entire half of the handguard and uh, it's just much easier to put your battery in connect the wires you know put the other half back on screw the uh, the uh, sling attachment point back on and you're good to go anyways though moving right beneath the handguard we do have our trigger and our trigger guard I would like to mention those are both metal so you don't got to worry about those feeling cheap on you guys I probably should mention everything on this is basically metal besides the green pieces all right so the handguard the uh, the cheek rest the uh, the motor grip or the pistol grip because the motor is actually not in there um, and then the uh, nice rubberized butt pad so everything that's OD green not metal everything else is metal. Never mind, I lied. I totally forgot. The charging handle is plastic. This thing just comes right on off. But yeah, the charging handle is plastic. Everything else metal. So speaking about the uh, pistol grip, as I said, it is not a motor grip because there is no motor in there. Um, it is finished in OD green. It is plastic, as I said. And an interesting feature on this, since there is no motor in there, you can actually go ahead and take off the bottom plate so you can put a tool in there. I don't know, maybe a little bag of Skittles, some M&Ms if you get hungry on the field. I don't know. Regardless though, totally up to you what you want to put in there. However, one little tip and one little reminder is depending on what you do put in there, um, it can rattle, all right? So if you're holding the gun and you're running, you can feel this just tapping and thumping on your hand and just you hear the rattle. It's just not going to be very fun. So whatever you do put in there, make sure it probably fits up the majority of the space so it doesn't just move around all the time. All right, so moving on from the pistol grip, this is probably one of the coolest features um, on this gun, and that is the safety. So the safety is basically located right behind the handguard and right above the trigger on the lower receiver. Um, so all you got to see is on that little button right there, I th hopefully the camera's picking that up, but it says S. If that is showing, that means the gun is on safe. If you push on that, the button pops to the opposite side and then it will show a little F all right literally a little F probably meaning fire which means it's not on safe so you can shoot the gun definitely one of the most definitely one of the coolest one of the most unique and discreet safeties I think I've ever seen anyways though so moving on to the middle of the gun we have the upper and lower receiver obviously as I mentioned they are full metal and I guess we can move to the charging handle because the charging handle is pretty damn cool so as you guys will see in the second half when we go outside when I shoot this thing you'll see the charging handle move back and forth it's electric blowback I don't think I mentioned that up to this point but yes this is an electric blowback so if you want to access the hop up though in case you want to use heavier BBs which you definitely should you probably should be using 0.28s 0.25 something like that maybe 0.3s hmm, I don't know up to you uh, you're gonna need to adjust your hop up regardless but yeah so if you want to access your hop up just pull back on the charging handle and boom there's your hop up system it isn't green it is just a rotary style hop up system I'm sure most of you know how to work those things one cool thing though sticking with like the whole charging handle and dust cover and stuff like that one cool thing is if you want to go ahead and you know adjust your hop up and not have to hold the charging handle back and fiddle with it with your other hand this actually does have a functioning 
bolt catch. So how to go ahead and do that, all you have to do is pull back on the charging handle and then push down on that little lever and boom, your charging handle stays back. And once you're done adjusting the hop up, just go ahead, pull back on the charging handle and let go and you should be good. All right, so moving on to the upper receiver here, right above the charging handle and the hop up and everything, uh, we have our iron sight. So we have our rear iron sight and our front iron sight. So starting with the front iron sight, um, it is full metal um, and you can go ahead and adjust it. It's just a normal L85 sight. If you want to go ahead and adjust it though, um, you have that little scroll or that little wheel that you can go ahead and scroll to the left or right, which can adjust the middle post to go up and down. And now as for the rear iron sight, that too can be adjusted. You have two different apertures I should mention first, one smaller, one bigger, and then if you want to go ahead and adjust that to the left or to the right, there's a wheel on the right hand side. Anyways though, I think that's it for this side. So let me go ahead and look at this side. What did I miss on this side? So, oh, pretty important stuff here. So the mag release, the mag release is just right here, just a standard L85 mag release. It is metal again. Um, just go ahead and push that in and your mag should pop on out. And then right behind that though, near the rear of the gun, we do have our fire selector switch. So the very last thing I guess I can discuss with you guys before I show you guys the trades is the magazine. It is just a standard M4 uh, mag. It's a high cap M4 mag. Um, I think it holds 450 rounds. It is full metal. Um, it actually has like 5.56 mm, you know, by 45, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's for like the yeah, realistic bullet if this was a, a real L85. Alright, so with that being said, I guess I can show you guys the trades. So starting at the front, um, on the right hand side of the handguard, it says uh, Rifle 5.56 G&G &G L85A2 and then I believe that is a serial number. Next up, we just have all these numbers and whatnot, maybe more, you know, serial numbers, I don't know. Um, but on the last row, it says L85A2 5.56 by 45 And the very last trade worth mentioning is uh, the trade right behind the uh, fire selector switch all the way at the end which says Gene G Armament made in Taiwan and I love how that is engraved into the metal and not just painted on. Alright so I think I discussed everything you know external I think I went over everything hopefully I didn't miss something if I did don't be afraid to comment down below um, I think I covered everything you know worth mentioning that's probably a more correct statement. So to start with the two biggest uh, you know things going on internally which are also uh, Gene G's newest additions to the uh, L85 series and probably the only ones you guys truly care about um, is uh, Gene G's new ETU and the programmable MOSFET. So I believe I mentioned this earlier in the video, but you can program this thing for three round burst. However, you can't do like crazy amounts of different combinations uh, when you're programming this thing. You can only program this thing for semi and three round burst. All right, that's the only two you can have that combination or default like any other airsoft gun semi full auto so semi full auto or semi three round burst that's it that's all you can do but it is still cool that you have that option to go into a three round burst if you choose so so now in terms of the motor again it's not in here but yeah in terms of the motor it is a 25,000 rpm high torque long axis motor so now the last thing i guess i can mention uh, internally is the inner barrel which is pretty damn long at 510 millimeters anyways though so with all that being said i'm pretty sure i discussed everything or as much as I possibly can and everything worth mentioning. Uh, let's get into the fun stuff. Let's head outside and let's shoot this thing. Alright, so I got the Chrono here programmed for point twenties. I got point twenties loaded up in the magazine. Let's go ahead and take the first shot. Let's see how hot this guy's shooting. Here we go. Shot number one. 380.5, 380 380.7, 380.6, 380.379, 380.382, 381, 379, 379, 381, and 381. So that's 10 shots right there. So that was actually pretty consistent. I think the highest shot we got was like 382, the lowest was 379. So I'm just gonna say 380. So expect 380 FPS using .20 gram BBs out of this L85. So with that being said, let's go ahead and turn this thing to full auto and we'll see how fast this guy's shooting. And guys, I am using a fully charged 11.1. So let's go ahead and see how fast this guy's shooting. Here we go. 
18.7 rounds per second. Let's go again. 18.6 and 18.6. So yeah, 18 and a half rounds per second. If you want to convert that to rounds per minute, that is 1,110 rounds per minute. Anyways though, let's go ahead and get into the accuracy test. Alright you guys, so here are the results. A lot of action going on right here, right on the right hand side of the target. Again though, I always do this. These targets are basically the size of my hand. Uh, so if this was a full person, uh, you would have absolutely no problem hitting them. And this was around, I would say 75-ish feet, 70 to 80 feet. I can't you know, believe it's more than 80 feet. So I'm just saying 70 to 80 feet. So with point twos and around 70 to 80-ish feet, not too bad. If I'm being brutally honest, I think the first like few shots two three four shots something like that i missed the target and like i was hitting up here or something like that but again if this was a person you would hit him guys i'm not sure how many shooting tests i've done but pause the music pause the damage test look this bb grazed the metal can and it literally peeled back the can it's not like it went through or anything like that it literally just got the perfect angle and just peeled it back All right, the good news is I don't think my tripod and camera are completely soaked this time. But let me go ahead and zoom out, actually. Oh, let's take a quick little peek. But damn, yeah, that was a long burst. We completely shredded this thing. Not too bad. Anyways, though, let's go ahead and let's go inside and we will wrap the video up from there. All right, you guys, so we're back inside. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This thing is a freaking blast to shoot and just mess around with. Um, so if you guys, again, do want to go ahead and read up on this, possibly purchase this, all the links will be in the description, all right? And again, big thanks to g g for sending this out to me. This wouldn't have been possible without them. Anyways, though, with all that being said, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and smack that thumbs up button. If you're new and you enjoyed what you just watched, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below so you can be notified when I do post new content. Anyways, though, with all that being said, again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching. You guys mean everything to me. I'll see you guys in the next one.